What's happening, folks? Back for another music video reaction, and we're going to watch another music video from Yazoo, or Yaz, and indeed, I noticed their YouTube channel is listed as Yazoo slash Yaz, which, again, for those who don't know the story, they were called Yazoo, and then when they tried to release material in North America, the company Yazoo from the United States sued them for copyright infringement, whatever, and ultimately they were forced to change the name of the group in North America to Yaz, in any case, I am going to listen to, or rather watch, the music video for Nobody's Diary, the opening track to their second and ultimately final studio album, You and Me Both. I enjoy this track a lot, though, again, this album entirely was not something I heard in my youth, whereas Upstairs and Eric's I had heard in my youth, although as I would later learn, the track list was a bit different from the original release in the UK. In any case, I think it fits very much with the sound that I was familiar with from my childhood, which is to say you get Allison's melodic and soul-infused voice mixed with Vince's electronic sonics. And yeah, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would necessarily call this a ballad, but it's certainly not so much of a dance floor burner as a track like Situation or Don't Go. In any case, I do wonder what the video will show. I'm not, again, there are a lot of songs where I think the lyrics can be taken in some different ways. I would certainly categorize this in that regard, but I'm curious if there's going to be any visual narrative or if it'll be more showing uh, Vince and Allison performing. And either way, let's watch and find out. This is Yazoo and the official music video for Nobody's Diary from their 1983 sophomore album, You and Me Both. If I wait for just a second more I know I'll forget what I came here for My head was so full of things to say You know, I do think Vince, whether you're talking the past or right into the present, has mastered the deadpan no emotion expression he always or not always but often seems to be very very serious or at least hyper focused but yeah so far it seems like maybe it's a bit of both we do have some stylized performance footage here meaning not like on a concert stage or not as part of a live performance but they are in their element vince is holding a keyboard presumably not plugged in but also allison you know singing to the camera but they're in stylized dress with a you know fictional backdrop so there's also the juxtaposition of this with the older couple at dinner and a spilled drink and seemingly a tense moment at the table so yeah curious to see where this is going visually What did that say at the top with Melissa is such a prig? Is that what that said? I can't, maybe, maybe just pig? I'm not sure. But yes, obviously we have diary pages here extending off into the horizon, but oversized and seemingly larger than life.
And we have the theme of the lyrics as I've sort of understood them, that is someone who doesn't want to be just one page. You know, they want to be part of this person's life and they're worried that if it doesn't work out, it's just going to be, you know, page 37. I briefly was involved with this person. I left them behind and we're hearing from the person who wants to be more than that. But then we have the woman at the table, again, seemingly in a tense moment with her dining partner, but she's actively writing a diary. So we wondered if that's what we see here. I did notice one of the lines also in one of the pages that was standing when you could see them better was something like she has no musical and I couldn't tell if it was skill or taste at all. So I don't know, maybe there's some reference to them in the music industry in the context of what is otherwise a more general narrative. I'm not sure. Can we just note, and this is not a slight of left-handed folks, but the angle at which people write left-handed so as to, I guess, not get ink on their hands, it's like, it's basically completely sideways. Okay, so uh, yeah, I do think it is directly connected because that was a different guy, right? So these potential suitors, and who knows, they might be unhappy because of the character of the woman who's writing the diary, but they are ending up as single pages or at least small parts of her larger diary, aka life story, and you know they're walking out upset and so on. So yeah, it does feel like this is directly related. Whereas a lot of 80s videos, you watch the narrative part and it's like... I really don't get how that's connected to the lyrics that are on the page, but here it does seem more directly related. And I apologize, I'll try not to stop it again until it finishes after this, but given the history of Yazoo and the way they were very short-lived and broke up almost by the time that this album was coming out, if not officially or formally before it was officially released, it is a funny footnote to the concept of the song that they, in a way, were just a page or two in each other's music diary, and ultimately Vince would become most famously known perhaps for Erasure, and Allison would go, go on to do a number of solo albums, which I'm still going through. But yeah, given how big of a hit they were, it's an interesting note in relation to this song, the fact that they were only together for a couple years. I didn't realize at first, and I'm actually second guessing if that really was a different guy. Like, I think maybe it's the same guy in all the dining scenes. Perhaps it is. Um, but yeah, so now I w like, is it a stage show and Vince and Allison are watching this stage show about people who are having this back and forth type of relationship? And maybe this scene here is flashing back to happier times before he stormed away from the table. And yet she's saying, just let me put my arms around you or hold your hand and maybe I can coax you back into a better connection. So yeah, it, it is a very interwoven video as opposed to, again, a lot of those 80s videos where... The performance of the song footage seems to be almost entirely unrelated to some idiosyncratic type of visual story.
I think the most important question is here, where did they get that massive oversized pen prop? Again, those things seem so highly specific. There's a company out there that makes oversized, ridiculously oversized, everyday life type of artifactual props. And it's like, well, okay, we got to order a 12 foot ballpoint pen. Like who do we call? Oh, right. The company that makes 12 point or 12 foot long oversized pen props. Nevertheless, yeah, I think that was a cool video, and I was remembering as I listened to the song how great that lead melody is. It's a simple little keyboard riff, but it really has a emotional, like, man, I'm reflecting on my pain and my experience with this person type of feel to it. So, yeah, cool video to a cool song. Again, no knock on what led them to break apart. I get it. Sometimes you just don't get along with someone. And, you know, I've read some things here and there about how Allison's personality was very strong and Vince just kind of wanted to do his own thing and make music and not have to get into a fight every time they were in the studio. And so ultimately their personal or personalities drove them apart. But it is sort of a happy thing to know that they eventually came back and, you know, did a performance here and there and, you know, sort of had a wiser and more mature look at what had happened so yeah shout out to both vince and allison shout out to the short-lived or short-lived rather yazoo do let me know what you think of the video and i will see you next time peace